Okay, so hey, welcome to the shop. Uh, today we talk about something that uh, the past few years we've all become very familiar with. Uh, let's talk about isolation and all the fun things that come with it, such as... Like talking to everybody through plexiglass. And dealing with foggy glasses. And trying to maintain your social distancing. Oh, come on guys, I just want a hug. Stay back! <laughs> okay, but so hey, so that kind of isolation, that's no fun. Today what we're talking about is galvanic isolation and galvanic isolators. Uh, I've encountered a little bit of confusion, I guess, with some boat owners about uh, galvanic isolators and what they do and what they don't. Uh, particularly, uh, the scenario is... Uh, Usually we're going to, we're talking about the boat is tripping ground fault breakers in these new marinas and the owner will say something to the effect of, uh, I don't understand why this is happening, I had an isolator installed. And uh, what's happening is the, you know, we're, we've got a little bit of a mix up between galvanic isolator and isolation transformer. Uh, they do very different things. So what I want to talk about today is what galvanic isolators are designed to do, what they're not designed to do, and uh, why you might want to get one. Okay, so I had originally thought that this would be uh, just a one video about galvanic isolators, <clears throat> but uh, the more I dug into it, I realized uh, that in the interest of keeping these episodes uh, bite-sized and easily digestible, um, we're going to break it up into two. So this video we're going to talk about galvanic isolators 101, the very basics of what a galvanic isolator does, what it doesn't do, and how it works on your boat. Um, and next video we're going to talk about uh, the differences in galvanic isolators because there's a, a lot of different ones out there and it is very important to pick the correct one for your boat and for your application. Um, and uh, we'll also show you how to test one and see if it's functional. So um, be on the lookout for that second video. <coughs> uh, isolation transformers, uh, that's a, a whole other uh, subject. Um, if you like, uh, we can take a deep dive into isolation transformers. Uh, yeah, let me know in the comments and uh, if you'd like, We'll get a uh, isolation transformer video out there too. So uh, stick around. Okay, so the difference between an isolation transformer and a galvanic isolator uh, comes down to an isolation transformer allows you to power your boat uh, through the magical mysticisms of magnetic fields and electricity. Uh, we can power your boat without having a physical connection between the boat and the dock. Therefore, it's isolated. The galvanic isolator, on the other hand, is designed to block small amounts of DC current from either entering or leaving your boat by means of the AC safety ground, the green wire in your shore cord, uh, while still allowing the AC safety ground to be intact. Um, so you might ask, well, why is DC current on my AC ground and why do I care? Um, so to explain that, uh, let's go over to the whiteboard of nautical knowledge and uh, I'll explain that and why this is a good idea. Okay, so here we are in front of the whiteboard of nautical knowledge. Um, you know, the purpose of a galvanic isolator like this is to block DC current from leaving or entering your boat by means of the AC safety ground, <clears throat> thereby preventing corrosion, galvanic corrosion between your boat and the next boat, or the boat down the dock. <clears throat> to explain why that happens, let's get into just a little bit of theory. Theory is always fun. <clears throat> so, in order for galvanic corrosion to occur, we need to have four elements. There has to be four things present in order for galvanic corrosion to take place. And just, by the way, um, we're talking about marine interest here. And this is just marine. <clears throat> so in order for galvanic corrosion to take place on our boats, we need to have four things. And those four things are we need to have a cathode, which is uh, the, metal, uh, the metal on a boat that's more positively charged. 
an anode is metal on a boat that's more negatively charged. There needs to be a metallic path that will allow electrons to flow between the anode and the cathode. And we need to have our anode and our cathode bathed in the same electrolyte. So, <clears throat> if we have corrosion, we've, we have a galvanic cell created here. Uh, if we remove either one of these elements, the corrosion will stop. The flow of electrons and ions between them will cease. So what we're trying to do with this device is interrupt this process by removing one of these elements. Okay, so this is when the party gets started. Let's say, uh, for instance, we were, this is our little boat here in the middle, and we just pulled into our marina, and we're going to plug into our dock. Now, uh, the green that you see here, this represents the AC safety ground on the dock, which is unbroken down the dock all the way back to the source of power. Uh, there is nothing in here that interrupts the AC safety ground except a galvanic isolator. So we're in our boat here and we pull into our slip and we plug in. So we plug in and our, we've joined our AC safety ground with his AC safety ground and his AC safety ground. Now inside the boats there is a point called a common ground point. And th at that point the DC negative, the AC safety ground, and the bonding system if you have one all join together. Now, what we've done by doing that, joining the bonding, the DC negative, and the AC safety ground all together, is we've created a metallic path between our prop, between our zincs, between our struts, and any other underwater metal through the AC safety ground to the boat beside us and to the boat beside him. We're all joined together. It's one big collective. So. If you are in this boat, you are sharing your anodes, your zincs, uh, with this guy over here by means of the AC safety cord. So if one of these boats tends to be, let's say, uh, this guy over here is very anodic. He is the most negative of the bunch, and our boat here is more cathodic. Electrons are going to flow from this boat into this boat and ions are going to flow out into the electrolyte off the underwater metals. So <clears throat> our boat over here is giving up metal. It's sacrificial anodes, it's props and all its underwater metal are giving up electrons to the boat beside it. So. Right here, we've created a continuous loop. We've made our galvanic cell, and we think, well, how do we go about interrupting this? Uh, we can't really, we can take our boat out of here. We remove the cathode, or we remove the anode. The process will stop. We could remove the electrolyte, get them out of the water. The process would stop. Not really a practical thing to do. Or we could, what if, what if we cut the safety ground on our boat? I know how to deal with this. I'll cut this wire and stop that no, process. No, 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 Very bad idea. I would not do that if I were you. Bad idea? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Very, 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 bad, very bad, idea. bad idea. I would ne do never do that. Do not even do think about, about it. it. Don't do it. Don't. Okay. Mm -mm. You can, Don't do it. You convinced me. Okay, so in case you missed that subtle hint, um, cutting the green wire, never a good idea. Never cut the AC safety ground unless it is to install a galvanic isolator. Uh, cutting this and leaving your boat ungrounded, real bad idea. Not good. Uh, will your boat still function if you cut that green wire? Yes, it will. Uh, will your car still drive if you don't have a seatbelt? Yeah, but uh, at some point you might need that. It's it's don't don't cut the green wire. Okay, so don't cut the green wire, but we still have to interrupt this process because we're sharing our anodes and our underwater metals with the rest of the marina. Uh, this is the one case where you really want to be selfish. <clears throat> 
because as electrons are leaving your boat in this loop, you're breaking down the metals uh, on, you know, on the molecular, the atomic level. And the stuff that holds the mo molecules together is being broken down and we're corroding. So the way we handle that is we install a galvanic isolator. Now, inside a galvanic isolator, basically all it is is a set of diodes. So we have a diode going this direction and we have a diode facing that direction. So we have two diodes in opposition which prevent DC current from going one way and from coming the other way. But if we have an AC ground fault on board our boat, that much voltage will overwhelm the diodes and pass through. And that way we've interrupted the flow of DC current without interrupting the flow of AC fault current. Okay, so that's our show and uh, about galvanic isolators, part one. Um, stick around for part two. Uh, it'll be great. Uh, trust me. Uh, and always remember, uh, isolation can be fun. Galvanically isolated can be fun. And remember, always. Like a good neighbor, stay over there.